ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له نشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يقول الله عز وجل في القران العظيم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل ان الموت الذي تفرون منه فانه ملاقيكم ثم تردون الى عالم الغيب والشهاده فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون وقال تعالى كل نفس ذائقه الموت وانما توفون اجوركم يوم القيامه فمن زحزح عن النار وادخل الجنه فقد فاز وما الحياه الدنيا الا متاع الغرور صدق الله العظيم my dear respected brothers and sisters on the friday that is very close to ramadan let us give ourselves a reminder a reminder that none of us can actually deny for many of us who are here on this earth have got caught in many different things that drive us down onto the earth they make us very heavy on the earth some of us have developed certain inclinations on this earth and allah azza wa jalla has created us as human beings and we have two parts to us we have we have the body and we've got the soul and some people actually say that some people say that i've got a soul but that is actually wrong you are the soul my friend you have a body you are actually the soul inside the body you are that individual the body is only one element to yourself and what we did when allah azza wa jalla gave us two sides he gave us the body to attach ourselves to this dunya to this world and he gave us the soul to attach ourselves to the akhirah and to attach ourselves to Allah when the body is attaching itself a lot more towards the earth then it wants to be here it wants to live longer like the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us he has told us yashib ibn adam son of adam continues to grow older wa yashib min uthnan but two things continue to grow younger in the son of adam the son of adam is getting older year by year but within the son of adam two things are becoming younger year by year and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that is the, the 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 hope and the yearning to live for a long life to have a long life number one wa hirsul mal and to actually have the greed of wealth it continues to become younger and younger in the, in the human being my friends some of us have come to this juma yet behind us we have got addictions Some of us our eyes continues to look at things that Allah has prohibited for us. Some of us will listen with our ears certain things that Allah has prohibited and we know it is prohibited yet we can't help ourselves but we continuously listen to those things. Some of us have engaged ourselves in a life where our hands are engaged our feet are walking towards things that are sinful but we cannot stop ourselves because we have become addicted. Some of us are taking narcotics taking drugs that are sitting here some of us are are involved in online gambling and it is a secret way for you to spend your money but it is destroying your life and you know it and you can't help it some of us here might be in the addiction of having some sips of alcohol some of us here might be addicted to our way of life whatever that might be some of us have been caught with arrogance and we know that we appear arrogant to others yet we can't help stop ourselves Some of us are jealous deep inside and our jealousy leads us to hating others and we can't stop that. Some of us here are, are sitting here with racism in their hearts yet it is a disease that they find difficult to get rid from their hearts. Why? And let me tell you that this reminder is going to be a way that you can get rid of all of these things. Some of us sitting here find that the life of this earth has become too much for us to bear. and that life is something that that is 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 taxing upon us it's too burdensome some of us sitting here have started to do things that we regret but we can't stop it 
Some of us here think and want a long life on this earth and that is one part of why we're doing the thing. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal, His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given us the remedy to all of these things. One stop, one remedy to all of this. And with this one remedy, you can get rid of all of this. You can free yourselves. You can free yourselves from your addictions. You can free yourselves from the time that you are addicted to your smartphones and the times that you are glued to the TV or to the to this tablet or to the monitor. You can free yourselves with this remedy that the Prophet Sallallahu has given. And this remedy is such that the remedy is something that is inevitably, inevitably going to be something we will see in our life. We're going to have to come to it. There is no denial of this. My friends, you can deny the fact that you will sit your exams. You can deny the fact that you might ever even get married. You might deny the fact that your sons or your daughters will ever grow up. You can deny the fact that your businesses may never you know, prevail or may never become something that is prosperous. You can deny what you want on this earth, but there's one thing you cannot deny. No man, no woman can deny the remedy that the Prophet ﷺ is talking about. No man, no woman can ever escape this. No man, no woman, no matter how hard they try to try and avoid this, they cannot move away from this. When the moment comes that it strikes, there is no going back, there is no going forth, nothing. Allah Azza says, لا يستخيرون ساعة ولا يستقدمون You will not get one single second extra to go forward, nor will you get a single second to go backward. This is inevitably going to happen to every one of us. Yet, what happens is, when the moment one of us has this thing coming towards him, we all feel that it's happened to him or her, and my time is coming a lot, lot, lot longer later. My friends, my friends, this is what the shaitan does. He puts us in a trance that this is not going to happen to us right now. What am I talking about? What is that remedy? The Prophet said, Aksiru min zikri hadi min ladhat. He has said, increase, increase, increase. Not just to do once, do it over and over again. Over and over again, spend a lot of time. Aksiru means spend a lot of time remembering the destroyer of all desires. And the Sahaba said, Messenger of Allah, what is the destroyer of desires? And the Prophet said, Death. Death is the destroyer of desires. Some of you sitting here in the khutbah right now are thinking, Well, we did not need this khutbah right now. I don't want to think about death right now. What kind of khutbah is this? Some certain people, I'll tell you one thing. Certain people, they want to talk about what's beneath the sky and above the earth. They don't want to talk about what's beneath the earth and above the sky. Why? They say we want to talk about relevant matters here today. We want to talk about things that actually are to do with us. Talk about things that are happening in the world right now. Why have a Juma khutbah and talk about death? i tell you why. Because if you want to fix yourself up and you want to see all the Muslims getting fixed up and you want to see the Muslims behaving as Muslims, then the Muslims will only behave as Muslims when they seriously think about death. That is the one thing that's missing in our lives. The one big thing missing in our lives. We have two dates in our head, my friends. Let me make it clear to you. We have the, we have the potential date of death and we have the actual date of death. The potential date of death means when I actually, well, when I think I might die. And the actual date of death is when I will die or when I can die. Every one of us has been fooled by the shaitan. You were in your teens and the shaitan said like a rubber band in your hand. If you have a rubber band, you can stretch the rubber band. The shaitan says, you're not going to die now. There's no way you're going to die right now. Old people die. And then when you're in your 20s, the rubber band increases. And it's a little bit longer. And the shaitan says, you're not going to face death right now. You're still going to get married yet. You're a young man. You're a young woman. And the rubber band just increased. You get in your 30s. You're already married. You have a couple of children. The shaitan says, you're still going to see your business thrive. You're, you're, you're still going to do something on this earth. So now the rubber band just got longer. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. You'll change. Don't worry. Time is there. You've got a long time left. He keeps on keep procrastinating. And this procrastination makes you feel that you can now get indulged with all the things that you have around you. 
The things that are around you, they attract you. They put you, they bring you together on the earth. They make you feel like you're here now. This is life. You're at the peak of your age. You're strong, you're agile, you're clever, you're intelligent. You've got all these friends, you've got social media, you've got the world around you. You've got money in your bank and you feel you're powerful. And yet what you do is you snooze Malakul Mot. You snooze it. You don't think that you can actually die today. And that's why you do the things that you're doing today. Malakul Mot is real. It is going to come to every one of us. You can procrastinate as much as you want. And the rubber band got even bigger when you're in your 40s because the shaitan said, you know what, right now you're not going to change because you need to now see your children grow up and you need to get them married off. By your 50s, it, 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 the, the rubber band is even longer. And it says that now your children are getting married now. That's good. You'll slowly get to do your, your things. You know, there's certain people who put up hajj till they got to the end of the end of their life. If they have a life that long. And then when you get to your 60, the rubber band is really long. And you know what the shaitan does? The shaitan lets go of the rubber band. Now your life in front of you is like the small original rubber band that you had, which was reality. Reality was the rubber band was small but you kept on stretching it. That's not real. That's not how long it is. That's not how big it is. But you come to that age and shaitan says, now you, you've had it. Now you've got no time. Now you're dead. Now you're gonna die any moment. Now you've got ill health. Now you wanna to turn to God, you hypocrite. Now you wanna bow down to God. What time have you got? How many sins have you done in the past? How many years did you sit in front of God? This is the, this is the waswas shaitan gives. If any man is sitting here and he's still 60, it's still not too late. Any man here 50, is still not too late. But any man who's in their 20s, any woman in the 20s, in the 30s, before that, in your teens, you make the move right now because the actual date of death is not guaranteed till 60, 70. The actual date of death could be tonight. It could be tomorrow morning. And some of you hate to think about it. Why? Why not think about death as if it's going to be the next thing that will happen to me? Why not? When it's going to happen to me? Because of the addictions that we're in. Because of the fact that we are grounded. We love the things we've got ourselves into. And Allah Azza wa has summed up the entire life of a human being in one ayah of the Quran. His entire life has been summed up. Surah number 57, ayah number 20. Allah says, اِعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُمْ وَزِينَةٌ وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ Allah says, O oh human being, your life is summed up in five things. Allah says, no, اِعْلَمُوا no, that the life of this earth is لَعِبٌ Games. Every youngster wants to play games. Every young child wants to engage themselves in games. The next thing Allah says when you get towards your teens, Allah says, Lahwun, amusements. You don't want to just play games, you want to be amused. So now you want to be entertained. You want to, be, you want to have laughter and jokes. You want to be in clubs. You want to be with friends and socializing, that's amusement. You want to have theme parks, that's amusement. You want to have games on your, on your PS4 and your Xbox One, that is amusement. That's not just games. You're being amused. You want, to see, you want to see dramas. You want to see films. That's amusement. So number one is live on games. Number two is amusement. And these stay with you throughout life. Number three increases when you get to your teens. Allah says zina, attraction. You want to attract people to yourself. Attract them to your face, attract them to your body, attract them to your, to your life, attract them to your car, attract them to, your, to yourself. This is zina. That's, your, well, that's what you're doing. Number three. Number four, Allah says, Tafakhurun baynakum. You want to become proud over one another. I have this. My team is better than your team. My place is better than your place. My country is better than your country. Tafakhurun baynakum. is strong pride over one another. My race is better than your race. My, my whole family is better than your family. We have a lineage higher than your lineage. This is not tafakhur. My exam results are better than your exam results. My car is better than your car. 
That is tafakhud, that is showing pride over one another. And Allah says, number five is takathurun fil amwali wal awlad. Then you just, the rest of your life is to increase your wealth and increase your, your progeny, increase your power on the earth. That's what it is. Five things, your whole life is gone. And then Allah gives a beautiful example, subhanallah al-azim. Allah says, كَمَثَلِ غَيْثٍ أَعْجَبَ الْكُفَّارَ نَبَاتُهُ ثُمَّ يَهِيجُ فَتَرَاهُ مُصْفَرًا ثُمَّ يَكُونُ حُطَامًا Allah says, you see some farmers who look across to the skies and they see rain clouds heading for their farmlands. They get very, very happy. Those rain clouds come, drop the rain on their grounds and they see lush green crops that grow. They wait for the harvest, they cut the crops, then after that they leave the stubble on the ground. After a while the wind continues to blow, the stubble turns from green to yellow. And when it turns to yellow, after a while, you see that the whole stubble then disintegrates into the air. It's completely gone. It's gone into the ground. Allah says, your life, my servant, son of Adam, your life with games, amusement, attraction, pride over one another, and increasing your wealth and increasing your, your progeny. All of that is like the rain clouds that come, the farmer gets so happy. And then it drops down. He's getting even more happier. It grows the greenness. It mesmerizes him. He's even more happier until he takes what he wants to. But at the end, it's stubble. At the end, it's yellow on the ground. At the end, there's no more greenness. At the end, it's all finished. My friends, Allah Azza wa is telling us that you will continue in your life until all of these phases would have passed. And in the end, what do you have? You have nothing, you got to face death by the end of it. Why run away from death? And in fact, I want to tell you one thing, brothers and sisters. Right now, in Toronto, you are using your time for what? To pay your bills, number one. To pay for your house, number two. To pay for all the different things for your children and your family, number three. To pay, to save up for your vacations, number four. To invest for your future, number five. These are the things that you're going to do with your money. But let me tell you one thing. At the time of my death and your death, which is going to happen, la mahala, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, don't try to snooze it. When that day comes, the money that I left in my bank transfers to others. The clothes that I left in my cabinet, in my closet, will be given to others. The bed that I slept on, I will no longer sleep in. The house I lived in will be given to my wife or my children or to the husband if there's a wife here. And all of that transfers. All the money that I invested abroad in this country is all given to others. Rasulullah says, at the time of your death, three things will travel with you. Two of them turn back, one goes with you. At the time of death, my family comes with me to the grave. My wealth comes with me to the grave up until I'm about to be buried. And when I'm buried, my family with the tears in their eyes will turn away. And at the time of death, the monies and the wealth and the fortune that I made will return back away from me. And the only thing that goes with me are my actions that I've done on this earth. My friends, if you've earned money and you spent the money on livelihood, if you spent it on looking after your family, if you spent it in halal, if you gave sadaqah with it, if you invested it in the akhirah, if you made something with it that is going to, like let's say for example, you give gifts to people, you pay for someone's fees, you do some good on this earth, you pay off someone's loans, you do whatever goodness you can with your money, Every one of those is in your akhirah, it's in your bank of the akhirah, it's an investment. That's number one, what you can do with your wealth. Number two, what you do with your wealth is you engage in, you, you engage in haram. You do haram with the money, 
you spend it in an unlawful way. That is gone into the Akhirah. That you're going to meet in the Akhirah. That you're going to see in the Akhirah. That's your investment, your minus investment you made for the Akhirah. And if you leave your wealth as it is, I know many individuals here, you've got tens of thousands of dollars lying around. If you leave it as it is, it's a loss in this world, it's a loss in the next world. You don't get it, somebody else gets it. That's the thing. You're going in your grave, your son that you paid for, his tuition all his life, his shadi, his, 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 his wedding, all that, you, you are nothing right now. All that money for them. What is for me and you? That is the question. My death is coming, your death is coming. And the actual date is any time. And when that moment comes, death will not give you or me a chance. Allah says, قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْ The death that you are trying to escape, eventually it will meet you and it will bring you back to your Lord. Allah Azza wa Jalla has said in the Holy Quran, كَلَّا بَلْ تُحِبُّونَ الْعَاجِلَةِ There's no other excuse, but you have fallen in love with this current world here. وَتَذَرُونَ الْآخِرَةِ And you leave behind the Akhirah, you shun the Akhirah. Allah says, كَلَّا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ التَّرَاقِي Allah says, when the moment will come, when your own soul, which is you, when you, you the soul, when you will reach the collarbone, وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقْ And it will be said, which doctor can we bring to try and cure this person? وَالْتَفَّتِ السَّاقُ بِالسَّاقِ and what happens is that your shin, one shin, is crossing over another shin. And he knows that this is the moment that is to go back to the Lord. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Holy Quran, Allah says that you leave this Quran and why? Because of what I gave you. I gave you wealth, risk, I gave you wealth, and because of that, you now desert this Quran. You desert the message of this Quran. I gave you knowledge, risk. You desert, you desert me. I gave you intelligence. I gave you a good job. I gave you family. I gave you friends. I gave you social life. I gave you the smartphones. I gave you the cars. I gave you the beautiful things in life. And what does you do risk? How come you use all of this to deny this? Allah says, okay, if that is the fact, falawla idha balagat al Allah says, well, what about the time when it's inevitably going to happen, when your soul will actually reach your throat? وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذٍ تَنْظُرُونَ And all of you will be watching that one person that is about to leave this earth. فَلَوْنَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ Allah says, if you really are not going to be accountable for what you've done on the earth, تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Then return that soul back into the body. The challenge Allah gives is to every doctor, every surgeon, every psychiatrist, every person who's in any profession, in any profession. Allah says, come together, come together. Try and make this soul stay in the body when I want to take it up. And that day is going to happen, my friends, and when it comes, لا محال, when it comes, it's going to end everything. So today, do yourselves a favor. You've heard this khutbah, increase the amount of remembrance of death, make this Ramadan the best Ramadan ever. Feel as if you're a man who's been given, a woman who's been given a chance after coming back from the Akhirah. Feel this is your last Ramadan. This is it. I've got to do everything I can in this Ramadan to get closer to Allah. And you know what? When the Sahabi came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, when is the last hour? The Prophet Sallallahu said, Mada a'adatta laha? What did, what have you prepared for it? In the past tense, past tense. And I'm gonna repeat that third time, past tense. All of us sitting here saying, we're gonna prepare for the Akhirah. We will do things for the Akhirah. I will get my tahajjud done. I will get my good akhlaq in my, in my body. I will, no, 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 stop that, stop that. The Prophet ﷺ said, what have you prepared for the Akhirah in the past tense? So whatever I have done yesterday, 
before yesterday. That is in my account. Whatever I want to do, that's not in my account. May Allah Azza wa Jal make it a successful Ramadan for us and make it a Ramadan where we actually feel that we're going to die any moment so that we can cut ourselves from all the different things that have attached us to this world and be purely there for the Akhirah. Wa akhir da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.